Support the production of original content that explores Kamai America. Support Comerican's funding drive to become a registered company based in Long Beach, California. Watch our video at Indiegogo.com or go to Comerican.com for more information. I'm Will Koenig, author of At Home on the Mekong. I'm talking to Richie Kong, an artist in California who is going to be opening his first show in a few days. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Richie? Well, uh, I grew up in Paramount Compton, and uh, my family, they were, uh, you know, they came from the refugee camps during the Khmer Rouge. So when we came here, um, we didn't have much, you know, I was very deprived. And the only outlet activities I had was drawing. So basically my whole life uh, from, you know, ever since I was born till high school, senior year, the only thing, utensils or tools I had was a pen and a paper. And, uh, you know, uh, that was pretty much my way to be creative and to keep myself going. Well, why are you an artist? Uh, well, first of all, I feel like, you know, uh, just having those tools that I had growing up uh, made me who I am. And uh, just the inspiration I've been getting from a lot of my peers growing up, uh, drawing characters like Ninja Turtles and <laughs> just like silly things like that kind of really intrigued me. And I got a lot of praises for it, you know. So uh, that kind of kept me going and pushed me to become who I am today. Uh, you know, being influenced by a lot of comic books and a lot of um, horror films too, which is kind of weird. I felt like I was really exposed to a lot of these things at a young age. So um, those were the things that really inspired me. And then I guess after that, it transitioned from there. When I went to college, um, I took an Asian appreciation class and it made me realize that um, my parents, they actually, you know, sacrificed a lot for me. Uh, they didn't really tell me a lot about myself. It was just kind of a realization at the time. So uh, after that, you know, I started to contribute a lot of my, um, my talents towards, um, you know, who they are, you know. And that says a lot about myself as well. So uh, a lot of explorations, a lot of... Um, just uh, influences and uh, just getting kind of paying homage to who I am. Well, your first show is coming up. This is kind of uh, your first chance to show the public at large the, the work that you've done. Uh, what's it like to have your first show? Uh, I'm really excited. Uh, it's just kind of crazy because uh, everything's moving so fast. Um, but yeah, my first show is going to be held at Cal State Fullerton, uh, March 10th, uh, 6 o'clock. Uh, I'll be at the exit gallery, and um, basically, um, it's going to encompass a lot of different mediums. I'm a multi, uh, multi-media multi artist, so I do a lot of photography. I do a lot of uh, fine arts, design, uh, just pretty much anything I can get a hold of. I'm going to try to make that into something that's original and still has a lot of Cambodian influences in it. What meaning does your work have for the Cambodian-American community? Um, well, the thing is that, like I said, a lot of my work is inspired by Cambodian art. So, um, what I, I kind of give it like a little twist to it. You know, it's just like what's going on now with today's society and with design and everything that's going on with technology, uh, kind of being used in a way where, um, it kind of somewhat caters to the community as well, but I also want to show that, you know, that we are capable of doing more as well, you know, not just kind of staying uh, stuck in where we're at and just, you know, uh, but seeing the overall consensus of how we can influence the world. A lot of my stuff that I do, uh, there's another event actually that's going on this Friday in downtown Fullerton, and uh, it's an art walk, the Fullerton Art Walk. I, I try my best to... Um, Whenever I do live painting, that's what I'll be doing this Friday. Um, I I try to interact with the people and tell them what Cambodian art is and who I am as well. So that's like one of the ways that I try to reach others who aren't aware what uh, the Cambodian cultures are.
is art walks, um, a lot of shows, uh, art shows, um, you know, coffee shop, just whoever that's curious, you know, they, they ask me what it means or what my pieces means, or even in public spaces too, because I do a lot of graffiti art, not the legal kind, but the stuff that, you know, that, that you, you have permission to do. So that expresses a lot of them as well in a larger scale. And that's what I love about graffiti is that you can actually uh, do things in a way where, uh, you know, it can be public and be public for a very long time. So um, it's very impactful medium. Okay. Well, let's uh, take a look at some of your work. That was kind of like the first sketch that um, I drew that was very geometrical. And as soon as I kind of just added the gestures of how each uh, lines flowed with each other, I start to realize that, you know, this can be something I can use as, uh, you know, just kind of like something I can use in the future. Uh, so that was like something that really inspired me was trying to find the dimensions, which is like the name of my art show, how I can use that uh, to, to, to build upon it, you know. And uh, I think using those geometric forms uh, was kind of inspired by looking at a lot of um, Cambodian architecture and uh, I was trying to get the sense of that as well that that we're, we're all kind of uh, been built up in a way where um, things can be dissected and put together. Uh, this one here is uh, well like I said about the dissecting and putting together and uh, kind of uh, you know have these ge geometric forms uh, that was kind of like the same thing. I built upon the first idea and used that as a um, an outlet for this piece here. Um, so basically, after that, um, I started adding these little filigrees to it. If you can get closer to it, there's little um, ornamentations, and that was like another way to express Cambodian art, you know, is that it has that modern look, but at the same time it holds those features. That's just more my graffiti influence using typography and finding relationships with lines and gestures. Uh, and I believe it says love because I feel like that is just something that I kind of hold on to is to, uh, to show that, you know, in this society, there's so much negativity that the only thing you can do is express love, you know. Um, especially, you know, even it, with the whole... Cambodian thing as well uh you know when you think of Cambodia there's a lot of corruption as well you know corruption and I feel like if we all kind of work together we can show you know that there's more than just you know trying to be on top of someone and uh you know uh finding ways to deceive whatever it is so that was kind of important to me to show that you know in our today society humanity today that there's a lot of uh, evil out there in the world. There's an actual picture of some of your graffiti work. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this one here, I believe, was just kind of a, a style that I use. You know, just kind of putting it into perspective and, and putting it into like visualization how my work looks like on the streets. Uh, that's just basically it. But um, but uh, yeah, you know, like I, I felt like that's a big uh, part of my life as well as as much as I try to let go of it. Graffiti is always going to be a part of me. Um, it, it's fine because uh, as soon as I went to design school, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to give this up. And I, I tried it as hard as I much as much as I can. There's no possible way I can be like, okay, I'm going to stop doing graffiti, you know? So uh, it's always going to be a part of me. Well, moving on to the fifth piece is another example of your, your graffiti work. Uh, where do you get permission to do graffiti? Uh, this one was in Frisco. And uh, my friends, they had like this building that they, I guess it's like a center basically. But um, but yeah, uh, just any place that has where you, where you're you're allowed to permit to paint basically. Initially, my show was gonna be called Siddhartha's Ratana, and uh, that's basically what it says. Uh, it's abbreviated as Ratana, and uh, I got that idea because growing up, um, one of my friends, my good friends, introduced me to. Um, Eastern Asian, uh, you know, mythologies, and um, he talked about Siddhartha and you know the Ramayana and the whole story about that. 
And I felt like, um, you know, just the impact I'm trying to do with um, to the community is kind of like the whole idea of Siddhartha, him being this guy who wants to explore and find himself and uh, just kind of looking through the eyes of innocence, you know. And I approach that whole story as as uh, me being in his footstep, kind of exploring different mediums and trying to find ways to uh, show people that there's more to than just doing art, but how art impacts, uh, you know, the community itself. This one here was a transition from doing graph art, you know, street art, into doing more fine arts. And I was able to find ways to uh, incorporate that. It doesn't have that connotation of graffiti, but people will see it as more as a beauty, beautiful thing. You know, it's, it's, it's more um, appreciated. I like to uh, draw all my pieces before I put it into a canvas or uh, whatever medium it is. And uh, this piece here is a drawing of a modernized Beiyun. And uh, it's a structure that's pretty popular. The next painting, there are four panels. It's pre pretty much two cans but in half. And it kind of shows the actual structure becoming alive. And I felt like, um, you know, today's modern society, uh, a lot of us who are uh, part of the American culture are trying to revive the Cambodian culture by, uh, you know, just uh, being young artists. And, and that was just kind of showing that, you know, that Cambodian culture is still active, you know. And you're painting reverence? Reverence. Uh, it was just another exploration of color. I got more into doing canvas, and this is like one of the first canvas I did was with a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of forms. Uh, but it shows a guy in the center. He's green, and there's like a hand that's pulling him down. And I felt like this is like one of my most significant piece because this is when I got a little bit more spiritual with my artwork. You know, having this good and evil. You know, this tug and pull. Uh, so this guy is kind of um, touching a god's face, kind of showing reverence to this person, knowing that there's more to life than, than you know, just constantly living this daily struggle. So do spiritual themes inform a lot of your work? Actually, I think spiritual themes are a part of all my work, really. Um, I think I feel most spiritual, like when I said I do live painting, uh, I feel like I just kind of filter out everything and feed off the music that's going on in the background. And, and I felt like even the notion of God, you know, like he's actually taking control of my hands and, and everything I do. Because I never know exactly how the pain is going to come about. You know, I don't know the end results. It just kind of forms itself. So uh, spirituality has a big part of my life. Well, a different kind of focus in uh, Angelina. Angelina. Uh this is like one of the pieces I'm not too happy about, but I am because, you know, <laughs> it, you know, Angelina, like who doesn't like Angelina? But, um, you know, it, I, feel, I felt like, you know, she kind of set a, uh, you know, like a place for a lot of Cambodians as soon as she adopted Maddox and all that. But at the same time, you know, I don't see her as an example of the Cambodian culture because she's not Cambodian. But I applaud her because, you know, the fact that she's, you know, let people know that we are there, you know. So, so I, I had her painted her dressed up as a absurda type of, you know, uh, person, uh, celestial dancer, whatever, mm -hmm. and um, and made her into like my piece of work, which is using the same geometric forms, kind of flowing in and out of the piece. Well, let's uh, move on to the series of sketches. This kind of shows your uh, progression of your work. Yeah, uh, this is a series that I did last year. Uh, it was kind of uh, something I did for fun for people, uh, just random people on Facebook. I was like, hey, you know what, check this out. Uh, whoever responds to me, the, the first like 10 or 20, whatever, get a free portrait. And it's another exploration of how my work transitioned to being fine arts and more digital media to more graphic design. So that's, that's just something I just wanted to... Uh, push myself I continue to uh, just challenge myself and doing more things instead of just being one-sided so in this piece here what I did was I sketched out the person in my sketchbook 
uh, with pencil. I scanned it in. Uh, I cleaned it all up, printed it out on watercolor paper, and then added some watercolor, and then put it back in the computer, and then render it in Photoshop. So, uh, so this is just like exploration, you know, just kind of getting more familiar with the programs and how my work transitioned from being more traditional to being more uh, digital, you know, assimilating to today's technology and, and culture. All right. So it's a multi-stage process. Yeah, multi-stage. Uh, I believe there's like four pictures in here. So you can see how it developed, you know, uh, as it progresses. This is a little bit different from your other work? Yeah, yeah. This is kind of showing... Uh, you know, like I said, my Cambodian aspect side, you know, this is my first time actually working with these toy vinyls and my work started to be more, uh, more substantial. You can actually hold it, you know, like it's an actual piece and uh, less, you know, two dimensional where it's actually painted on a uh, canvas on a flat surface. So that's what I love about this is that, you know, it, it's an actual piece that you can look all 360 degrees. Um, but at the same time, a lot of the uh, the in intricate shapes on their forms were uh, inspired by Cambodian culture. I was looking at a lot of um, you know filigrees and ornamentations that were on these temples uh, in you know uh, I was gonna say so come on, but Cambodia. <laughs> um, but yeah, and uh, you know using a lot of uh, you know the ornamentations with I felt like were you know there's a teeth on his stomach and everything that was kind of like how a lot of the mask in Cambodia looked like the, the Hanuman and all the evil deities. All right. I see the resemblance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. On to some more sketches. We've got a defined bird. Yeah. Um, just kind of more of my, how I implemented um, my Cambodian culture into my illustrations. And there's little filigrees kind of uh, flying across the body of this bird and and how that, you know, influence, uh, you know, my work today. And Apsara? Uh, the, the Apsara was actually uh, a sketch that I did that was uh, put into Illustrator. And it was a t-shirt design I did for my Cambodian club. Um, unfortunately, I didn't use it, but uh, I still kept it. I feel like it's a good portfolio piece. Um, but, you know, it's just something that really I felt like, was um, really defines Cambodian culture and it would be nice to show, you know, CSA and the celestial dancer that we see as, as beauty, you know, that did a lot for um, the pretty much the royal empires, you know, back in the day. So it was like, I felt like it was a, the best example to use for, to show people that who we are as uh, Cambodians. Uh, for the penultimate image, uh, heart and wings, it doesn't, Seem to be a terribly common Cambodian <laughs> cultural symbol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's kind of more about who I am as a person. You know, like the heart is kind of like on fire and just kind of shows, you know, like my enthusiasm as a Cambodian to continue to inspire and hopefully even help, uh, you know, just the people I'm around. So uh, that's kind of more like I feel like more who I am as a person, you know. And at the same time, how my work transitioned to, once again, you know, more into the digital field, you know, assimilating to today's uh, culture and society. Finally, we have a logo for California State University Fullerton. <laughs> yeah, um, this is like me transitioning to think more like a designer, uh, kind of seeing the overall consensus of how, you know, like how, when people see this, like what do people think? And that's basically what a logo is, you know, it's a, it's a stamp, you know, that you, you make and, uh, you know, you still use little uh, kind of uh, designs that shows the influence to get people to think, oh, what is this, you know? So, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much who I am <laughs> at the same time, you know, making this mark. <laughs> and it's a mark. Yeah, it's, it, Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if people want to learn more about your work, uh, about your exhibits and uh, where they can find your art, uh, what's the best way to follow you? Uh, you can go to my Facebook. It's www.facebook.com forward slash Richie Kong Arts. It's R-I-T-C-H-I-E-K-O-N-G-A-R-T. And uh, you can also look at my Behance.net too as well. It's Behance.net forward slash Richie Kong. All right. Well, thanks for taking time to talk to me. All right, thank you.
That's all for this podcast. If you'd like to learn more about my experiences in Cambodia, grab a copy of my book at Home on the Mekong on Amazon. For the latest news on the Cambodian American community, go to Comerican.com. Theme music courtesy of Bochan Hui. For more information, go to Bochanmusic.com. Namo no pramo.